Yes, go ahead. You probably want to mute. Okay. <clears throat> so the title of this presentation is what I think I've learned about the axiom with F FT8, maybe. Uh, and it's intended to be a dialogue. And it's intended to engender comments, questions, anecdotes from those out there to learn something from my audience and perhaps to inform. Uh, if you have uh, if you have cursing to do, uh, do it quietly. And if you're uh, snoring, please uh, mute, mute yourself here. <sighs> so let's see, who'd have thunk it? That was my workplace in 1968, IBM Systems Development Division Lab in Poughkeepsie, New York, where I was writing software for OS 360. And uh, when I was WN2 JLQ in Poughkeepsie, New York, um, my technology stack was kind of simple. I had the AC mains and old Navy surplus SP JX, 600 JX and ICO 720, a bunch of crystals, homebrew transmatch and a long wire going out the bathroom window. You can see it going right up the wall there. Um, it was kind of crazy back then. If anyone is interested in software engineering stories, the mythical man month by Fred Brooks used to work uh, in Fred's organization uh, is highly recommended. So amateur radio and computers, I thought, gee, there's two different worlds. This is solid state, this is hollow state. I got, there's no convergence. But then, 54 years later, I find myself running uh, WSJTX, JT Alert, and DX Lab uh, on my Shack computer. My layout's across uh, two HP Pavilion 32Q, 32-inch um, uh, diagonal screens, giving me about six uh, cubic feet of, uh, of uh, desk space. Keep the browser over here. I've got uh, I've got the X Lab running here, and in the middle I have my uh, my uh, JT uh, WSJTX. So the stations in Allocraft K line K3P3 uh, Cat 500 KPA 500 into a stepper 3040 up about 40 feet and so to, and a GR uh, GR uh, G5RV plus inverted V for 80 and 160. It gets the job done. So first of all, disclaimer, I'm not here to represent myself as the uh, expert on WSJTX. I, I'm only a DXer with some success using WSJTX and I've got some techniques I use when I use it. And that's all I can present. So as of yesterday, my log contained 36,124 queues. 14,439 of those were uh, FT8 DX queues. So that's about 40% of my total log these days. Given, my, given an error rate, a normal error rate of 1.5%, I can pretty much say that North of 217 of these QSOs, I've totally hosed, probably more. But in the process of making all those errors, it did have some successes. So people ask me, why do I operate so much FT8? And the answer I have is pretty simple because much of the DX is operating FT8. And thanks to Monk Yakovas. Uh, I was able to get an all-time new one at uh, Mount Athos recently. So the opportunities are out there to work the X. So the technology stack's gotten rather complicated. Now you got the AC mains all the way up through the computer hardware, software riding on top of that, device drivers, logging software, CAT control software, WSJTX, JT Alert, up through the transceiver, power supply, the audio connections, the feed line, and the antenna. And that's what I'm running. And gee, the DX is running the same thing. 
and we're subject to propagation, which is kind of funky, and local noise. I've got my local noise, the DX of the other station has their local noise. But WSGTX allows some major operator skill to affect the outcome and get more DX QSOs in your log. There are lots and lots and lots of layers from this. There's also this program called JT Alert, which I use, I won't go into here, um, but it provides a level of filtering of your decodes, some alerts and some logging APIs to let you communicate with uh, logging programs. If you're gonna use the audio alert, I use uh, R2D2 from Star Wars as my audio alert a separate sound card may be needed so that you hear the audio alerts through your uh, computer speakers and you have another sound card for digital or vice versa. <clears throat> for now, we see through a glass darkly. Um, what I, one of the first things I realized when I started using FT8 is what I see on the waterfall is likely not what the DX and the other stations are gonna see. I only see what my propagation and tech stack will permit me to see and they see the same thing. So it's not, it's not a video game where, you know, multiplayer video game where everyone sees everyone else. It's not really the case. So my view of the elephant is entirely different from someone else, maybe even down the block. I know that I'll see and decode things, but Paul and 6PSE up on the side of a mountain with an 80 foot tower is not going to see and vice versa. So it, it, it's really interesting that <clears throat> you're only seeing what you can see and the DX only sees what they can see. So that means the trace of the DX that I'm chasing over here may be perceived as the clear spot by another nearby station. When I say nearby, I mean nearby in an RF sense. Uh, could be near my, nearby me, could be nearby the station I'm trying to work. So when you're out there working FT, uh, FT8 and you've got a DX trace and somebody comes onto the frequency and starts calling CQ in the same interval as the DX, it, in all likelihood, they do not see the DX there. They just don't see it because their view of the elephant is different than yours. It's just all part of the game. And if they are on the frequency and they transmit in the same time interval as the DX, then the DX is a QRM for me and anyone else trying to work with. So on the waterfall, you've got this control area here. And if you click that, you get a series of waterfall controls. Uh, the one I use most is the uh, start of the waterfall. You can adjust it up and down by 100 hertz. And when I'm working uh, DX that's in the lower uh, portion of the waterfall, I'll adjust that waterfall up and try to get try to get the DX closer to the center of the audio band pass as possible. There's other controls here to uh, to play with. My hint is take a screen grab of what these controls are before you start messing around with them so that you can return them. Uh, drove me crazy for a couple of times. So the band pass is about three kilohertz audio band pass. The FT8 signals plus or minus 50 hertz signal. It's not channelized. So here's a, here's a, a series of signals where there are two overlapping stations and WSJTX does a great job of, of sorting those out. Now on the waterfall, when I'm in a receive, I can see both odd and even time domains. Time domains are 15 seconds apiece. The even domains are at zero and 30 uh, seconds into the minute. The odds are at 15 and 45. 
So it's like a, in RX, it's like you're standing in a theater lobby. You look through one door and you can see the even domain and you look through the other door and you can see the odd domain. But as soon as you get into the business of transmitting or calling CQ, if you go, if you transmit or call CQ in the even domain, you'll only see the odd responses. And conversely, if you go over here and you transmit the odd domain, calling CQ or calling a DX station, you only see the even responses. I spend 99% of my time doing what all good DXers do, and that's listen. So I'm in receive, and I like to see what's going on. I like to see who's working who, and this allows me to do it. I'm not much of a proponent of banging away at, uh, at uh, DX stations or banging away calling CQ. Um, I generally like to search and hunt. So on the waterfall, my particular setup, I've discovered that my uh, WSJTX uh, developed audio pulses at uh, intervals of 1,000, 1,500, 200, 250 kilohertz. It's crazy. I can't get my ALC to settle down. It's just a nature of the, of the cheap sound card I'm using. So I always go for the lucky seven. I, just a superstition, but I'll find a spot like 1137 or 2077. Apparently three works just as well, but I like seven. So what I discovered is I can't assume that my WSJTX audio input to my transceiver is linear across the waterfall. It's not. And WSJTX provides a power slider, the worst possible name for a, a control I've ever seen. It allows me to adjust the audio input level into my K3, and I use the mouse wheel to do that. And I keep the ALC in nominal limits. And whatever is nominal limits really differs by brand of the transceiver you're using for sound card modes. The K3 has this uh, interesting situation where uh, for proper modulation of an FT8 signal, a digital mode signal, you, uh, you have four bars of ALC and the fifth flickers. So because I have that displayed on the K3, I'm able to make very rapid adjustments. And I think it's important, I found that it's important that you have the proper level of modulation in your signal. RF power is determined by the transceiver and the amp, not the power slider. I've had a number of conversations with people seem to believe that if they just ramp that power slider up, they're going to make more contacts. And I often ask them, well, if you're running sideband and you want more power out, you crank your mic gain up. But they don't, they don't seem to catch, catch the uh, correlation. So there's a number of uh, interesting keyboard and mouse waterfall can, uh, functions. A cursor on the waterfall, then control left click will set both the TX and RX on the waterfall. So if you're looking for a place to uh, call CQ and you find, a, you find a clear spot, put your cursor over here, hit the control button and click and you'll be set TX and RX in the same spot. Keyboard at C, cursor on the waterfall, left click sets the receive and cursor on the waterfall, shift right, shift left click will set the TX. So if you happen to double click on a call sign and it sets the receive here, you can use shift left click to set the TX at an open, open spot. It gets you on frequency quicker. So you're working this guy and, and I didn't get my R73. What's up with that? And my recommendation is log it, Dano. And you log it because in all likelihood it was sent. In all likelihood it was sent. I'm going to ask a, you a leading question. Sure. Where's the split TX function button? Okay, I'll get into that. Okay, I'll wait. All right, so here's, here's, what, here's what went down. I'm banging away at uh, UN9L, love to work those Kaz Kazakhstanis. And uh, 
he comes back to me and I go back to him. And then he comes back to me and I go back to him. Finally, I said, the heck with it, I'm gonna log it. Why? Because N7SMD didn't see, didn't see UN9L changing frequency and, and ended up transmitting right over his trace. Further, further on down the log, it discovered that UN9L did log our Q cell. So when in doubt, if you've had a good, couple of good signal report exchanges with your DX, log them, log them. Sometimes it doesn't matter where I uh, transmit on the waterfall. I can work this guy up at 1450 Hertz by transmitting down here at, uh, at 150 Hertz. He'll still decode me. But I found over the course of this, the closer you get to the, to the TX, the better my odds are gonna be to get a contact point. And it's happened so many times this way that I really think there's some virtue in this. It seems particularly true of uh, distant DX. And the reason for this, I think, is that the DX, when, it, when the DX station picks a, a place to transmit, it's a clear spot for him. And the closer your transmission is to his clear spot, I think the odds of you being decoded by him are higher. Now, all that being said, uh, I consider 200 Hertz plus and minus from 1500 to be prime territory. And this is where I like to hang out as a band is open. I've got a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, propagation predictions and I'm pretty, pretty much got a feel for when bands are opening and when they're not. So I like to get there, get position, hang out, maybe call CQ a couple of times just to let people know that I'm here. Okay, so we had a, we had a question about uh, the functionality and where split is. The, the little checkbox here, hold TX frequency, uh, that's effectively audio bandpass split. What you're saying is I'm going to sit on my chosen transmit frequency, audio frequency of 667, and then I will look, for instance, BG7XVX is on 1475. So I'll transmit here and I'll listen on 1475. That's effectively bands, audio bandpass split. So you're splitting within the bandpass. If whole frequency is not clicked, not checked, then if you double click on a call sign here, you're going to have your RX and TX frequency on this right on, on him and you'll be transmitting on the frequency that he re receives. Not always a bad thing. So that's the difference between audio bandpass simplex and audio bandpass pass split is this little control right here. Does that, does that answer your question, Jeff? Yeah, it does. I'm sure there's lots of commentary about that. We can talk about it later. But okay. I had an experience last night where it's not a problem during your queue. So, but then the if you do that and then you start transmitting again after you have a split, then you can create problems in the next queue. So, if I want. Oh, you can, and and I'll get into that too. Okay, I'll be quiet. <laughs> okay, so ninety nine percent of the time I'll use a uh, whole TX frequency. I like to. I like to, if I find an open spot I can transmit and it's reasonably near the center of the band, I'll hang on to it. And I will work most of my DX using audio band pass split or hold TX frequency. If it's not used and I go there for on purpose, if I leave my TX there, then I am on TX on the, on the uh, DX's TX. And if I'm called by a guy in a different interval, and I start transmitting to him, then I'm going to QRM the DX for everyone else in the band pass. I don't want to do that. 
So 99% of the time, I'm guaranteed I'm gonna stay out of trouble because I'm gonna be uh, uh, transmitting on a different frequency than the, than the DX is transmitting. A little brain fuel here. Okay, and approximately 1% of the time I'll TX on the DX is TX frequency. And why will I do this? Well, I'll do it when we've both had uh, repeated exchanges of signal reports that should allow us to decode each other. In this example, um, he was giving me an 04 and I was giving him a, a 10, minus 10. I mean, we should have copied each other, but we weren't. So from the outcome, I sort of reasoned that there was a there was a station stronger than the DX. It was QRM to my trace or vice versa. I couldn't hear him. So then I used this button, which is you know, VFO to B to VFO A, to go on to his frequency. One, one more report to HBO, HB0, HB9, LCW got me my 73. And after I sent my 73 to him, I hightailed it off his frequency so that other stations would have an opportunity to work. In. And then <clears throat> sometimes, particularly when there's a there's a rare DX out there and there's lots of people calling him, I really want to have full control over what I'm doing with WSJTX. So I'll go into WSJTX's uh, settings and I'll unenable the double click on call sets TX enable. So I can double click all I want. I'm never gonna go into TX enable unless I click on TX enable on purpose. So I'm able to, I'm able to use this to set myself up. So I can watch what the DX is doing. I can look for a clear spot and there is TX frequency. I can wait for him to sign 73 or CQ before calling. Most of the time I don't, I just use uh, WSJTX with this enabled and just go about my business. But there are times when I really, I really want that contact. I really want that entity or the band slot. So I'll, um, I'll sneak up on him and not, and, and not, have more control over what I'm doing, and I'm not going to be putting a lot of extraneous RF out on the band, which I think is a good thing. Now, sometimes you need to make an adjustment up or down about where your uh, TX frequency is or where your RX frequency is, and you can do it with these little arrows here, which I've gotten reasonably good at finding. I would think they could have been bigger, but that's not my call. Um, if, you, if you hold the control key down while plus pressing them, they go up and down by 10 hertz. If you don't have the control key, it just goes up and down by one. So I use a 10 hertz increment to slew around. Anyone remembers Space Invaders on the old Atari system? That's kind of what it's like to try to line yourself up. And also direct entry of uh, RX and TX waterfall frequencies are supported. So if, if for some reason you wanna go to a specific frequency and I'll, I'll cite an example when you want to do that, you can double click on that uh, TX number right there and uh, enter it. So tail ending can often, often be uh, effective. Um, I, I just, use this as a demonstration um, for uh, VU4. Uh, he just finished signing with uh, JO1XMN and JO1XMN had transmitted on 780. So I set my TX frequency to 780 because I know, I know VU4 has, has got his RX there. And uh, so I'll attempt to tail end JO1XMN. It didn't work, but it was an example. So further controls here, if you're calling DX or CQ and you don't want the TX watchdog timer to time you out, 
And every so often when you're in RX, you click halt and then enable again, and it resets the timer and you can go on calling in vain to the empty band. Halt TX is my emergency off switch. So if I'm calling the wrong guy, I've clicked on the wrong call, I'm calling the wrong guy, I'm calling the wrong place. I don't want to do that. Uh, I have a wrong antenna, whatever other error I'm likely to make. I just click here and it stops. Now, if the DX is making a lot of cues very quickly, you can pretty much pick up on the fact that he's responding to calls to him with the, his signal report as an opener. He's likely doesn't care much about your grid square. So in order to enter this signal report first mode, just click on TX2. And that'll set WSJTX up so that answers and response to the DX calls the DX with their signal report. Here's a perfect example, max TX2 MAX. When I was watching, it was showing a rate of 55 Q cells an hour. Well, that's that's whooping, whooping around there. In order to maintain that rate, he had to be answering calls with a signal report. No grids. No grids, especially useful when the DX is running MSHV. Now, MSHV is a multi-stream FT8 variant by uh, LZ2HV, usually on a non-standard HF frequency. Everybody playing in this mode is in normal FT8 mode, so you don't have to go to Foxhound. Um, it's like Foxhound, but it's faster because there's no TX3 direct going on. Used by the DX that want to uh, increase their QSO rates and uh, call, call the DX using a signal report, no grids. I had a lot of fun with uh, VU4W. Okay, so the tune button is my friend. I use the tune button and a dummy load, which I can switch into my K3 to determine how my sound card output and ALC varied from low to high megahertz on the waterfall. So my, my sound card seemed to have thirds. I have a lower, lower register, middle register, and higher register. And it doesn't vary by much, but sometimes it's enough to make a difference. So, uh, I adjusted my power slider and got good ALC action on all these areas. And I pretty much know uh, now based on where uh, I'm going to be transmitting what my um, transmit digital gain should be. And this I found to be true and I should have highlighted it more. Too low modulation erodes decodes at my QSO partner. If I'm not modulating enough, I'm not going to get my signal decoded quite as well as when I'm perfectly modulated. And if my modulation is too high, I'll splatter. I've done this in the excitement of the moment. I'll splatter and it also erodes my decode in my Q so far. So keeping that ALC right in the middle for me, give me my best results. Power slider adjusts the audio amplitude into your receiver. So WSGTX generates the tones and the amplitude is set uh, by this slider. Now right click, if you right click on that slider, whoop, <laughs> right click on the slider, you could select it without changing its value. I tried left clicking it and I'd always slide it up and down unintentionally. But if you left, left click, you can change focus to that slider and then your mouse wheel can change it up and down. And the transmit uh, and that slider as you adjust it will display a transmit digital gain. So you're, it's useful for noting uh, your values across your waterfall. Call first, answer my first caller. So if I'm calling CQ in a DX rich environment, I'll leave this on. But if I'm being heckled, 
Uh, and by heckled, I'm I mean I'm receiving a lot of unsolicited calls. Now, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to work VU4W, and there's this guy in Oregon that just, he's just dying to work me in. <laughs> so he'll interrupt my stream of thought if I have call first, so I'll unclick it. Auto sequence means you'll follow the, se the normal sequence of uh, messages automatically. I've never operated with this unchecked uh, on purpose. I unchecked it once just to see what it would be like, and it was it drove me nuts. I had uh, I I had no control because <laughs> I didn't know what it was doing, so I never use it. Okay, the erase button is uh, is handy. Click once to erase the uh, RX frequency. Uh, double click and you will erase both the RF frequency and the band activity. I routinely do this when I change bands, just give myself a clean start. But sometimes not. If I've got a partial, partial Q cell on one band and I want to check another band, see if it's open, I'll go to that other band, but I won't erase anything. That means that this data stack and both these are will be there. And if I need to complete, if I have the opportunity to complete the QSO on the former band, I can. <coughs> CQ only um, when set up. If I set that, I'll only see stations calling CQ, but that's really not what I want to do. I like to see everything that's going on because there's hints and allegations of going on in the waterfall about what, who's seeing who, who's working who, and uh, just kind of gives me the temperature of the pond. Now the add button, add DX call and DX grid, uh, adds this call and grid number to uh, a call three TX file. Uh, I, I try to remember to do this. Uh, the lookup button actually checks for a DX call, but I don't use this much. Uh, thanks to uh, Dave and uh, DX Lab, because DX View resolves my V headings for me. But I try to remember to do it. So the stop button. When the stop button gets clicked, the waterfall freezes. Monitor button doesn't turn green. Um, the decode does not flash blue. Uh, and everything stops. The amplitude scale down here doesn't show any signal. But these panes remain scrollable and selectable. So if you want to say, wait a minute, was that an Azerbaijan station I decoded? You can stop everything and roll back and see. You can see where you transmitted. It's good for capturing screen grabs, presentations, making up bragging emails. <laughs> Drive your friends crazy because you did work Azerbaijan. So when in Fox Hound operation, I found that, of course, you transmit above uh, one kilohertz, but as close to one kilohertz as the opportunity presents itself. And done a lot of Fox Hound QSOs. I get back up here, I'll just be banging away. As soon as I find an open spot down close to 1,000 and find it in TX there, my odds go up a lot. So. I, I'm not sure why. I don't really understand all the communication science behind it. I'm just reporting my, my results. And the inadvertent hound operation, which always immediately follows one of my fox hound sessions. Uh, I always forget to get out of fox hound when I go to it. I go to regular operation and uh, I'll call a guy and he'll call me over to his frequency. Sure enough, he calls me over to his frequency. And I have to be aware of that. I say, oh yeah, I see. So I try to keep track of where I'm transmitting. So I turn this off and I get off his frequency. Now, one of the things that I found very useful is that all the activity in my WSJTX sessions, all of it, is recorded in all dot text. So to find it, you open, you go to the file menu, open log directory, which for me is here. All dot text can be very large. 
And the interesting thing is if WSJTX doesn't find it at startup, it creates a new one. So you can back it up periodically, which I do. So pretty much everything I've ever done on uh, WSJTX is in a text file, saved. And this is particularly useful for those times when you find an FTA Q cell in the DX's log, but not in mine. Yikes. You know, I go on club log and say, I sure wish I worked him on 17 meters. And he's got me at 17 meters. Uh oh, I, I, I missed an opportunity. I, I violated my own rule and didn't log. So what I can do is I can bring this up in Notepad and I can search. I can search for a string that says K6MPF space so the DX is call and find all the times that VK9DX called me. And I can search for the, for the reverse and find all the times I called him. And once I found it, then I'm able to recreate the log entry for that Q cell. And nine out of 10 times, that's when we worked. I didn't get the RR73, but he logged it. Thank you very much. So if you go into either band, band activity or, or RX, uh, you'll, you're select, you can select it. So a right mouse click will get you copy, select, erase. And you can drop that into a uh, notepad or other text processor and uh, search it. At this particular junction that we were all on the repeater, and Paul was trying to see if he worked a TX5N uh, on 40 meters. And I was able to search through my band activity and tell him, yeah, he gave you your RR73. So Paul logged the QSA. So notepad's real handy to have open uh, for when you're operating FT8 because uh, you can use it for text, text search and text manipulation. The other thing is, um, and I just, I haven't used this often, but sometimes I do. Uh, once you say log the Q cell, brings you up the Q cell line. This is all, this is all adjustable. So you can make adjustments to the date or the time uh, for a particular Q cell. So when all else fails, um, Google up WSJTX manual and click on this link and you'll get the WSJTX uh, user guide. Uh, the good news is that uh, it's largely written by Joe Taylor, uh, who is a uh, Harvard PhD and Nobel laureate physicist. The bad news is it's written by Joe Taylor, a Harvard PhD and Nobel laureate physicist. So more than you ever wanted to know about WSJTX. But it's there, it's all there. So fine tuning on uh, Windows 10. Um, I set my cursor speed at 12. That allows me to kind of juke around between my two screens, but still provides me accurate placement on the waterfall. And I set my mouse wheel scroll line at one per line, just so I can adjust my uh, power slider. And I set my cursor uh, as a yellow, which I find very useful against the blue background, easy to see. I got about six square foot of desktop, so it's, it's useful to be able to pick that cursor up quickly. So 30, 40 meter FT8 around uh, 1400 Zulus, my sandbox. Um, China, Japan, Indonesia, all in the band in abundance, and navigate around. And practice my skills, experiment with low power. How low can I go? Well, you know, half a watt will get you most of Asia. Um, be the DX, just call CQ Asia a couple of times and <laughs> they'll, they'll be all over you. And uh, occasionally, mine rotatable so I can uh, follow the, uh, the uh, 40 meter gray line. And, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, a bunch of other stands will show up. And sometimes I really get lucky. And there I worked uh, 
Chuk uh, JT1CL. And sometimes you get double lucky, and uh, I'm actually get able to get a QSL from him. There's 80 meters and 40 meter in Mongolia, which 80 meter Mongolia is saying something for the little dinky water antenna I've got up there. So it's a pretty amazing mode, I think. Now, also within WSJTX, there's this series of network services called en Enable PSK Reporter Spotting. Some very interesting wrinkles in this. First of which is um, when you're running JS, uh, WSJTX with this enabled, WSJTX is decoding all the signals that it hears and it's putting little packets out on the internet to inform this website that you're hearing them. So it in effect is revealing your revealing your presence. And I found this out. Uh, my usual routine is get up, let the dogs out, go get a cup of coffee. And in the process of doing that, I heard R2D2 in the shack, get my alert. So I came in, I was being called by a station from Indonesia, which came as quite a shock to me because I hadn't transmitted squat that morning, but he saw me. He saw me because I popped up on PSK Reporter because my, my station was decoding uh, 40 meter FT. And that's when I realized there's another type of interesting thing I could be doing here. So I, I was fortunate enough on 30 meters a few, maybe a week ago to set this up. This actually happened. So here I am on 30 meters, and I've been chatting with folks, you know, FT8 back and forth. And I noticed that JE1BBX is hearing me on 30 meters, but he's not transmitting. I checked. I checked on PSK Reporter to see where his signals were. He, he, they were none. But he's hearing me. So now I can make some reasonable assumptions about JE1BBX. His, his tech stack is running or receive on this band. He's decoding me. When he decodes his own call sign, some level of alert is going to go off in a shack. Something. JT alert, WSJTX, a color and a screen will change or something. So JE1BBX's presence here indicates that an FDA QSO is possible and a potential uh, DXQ so is also possible. And I also have the element of surprise, just like I was surprised. How did M MK K6MKF know I'm here? But I can't assume that he can transmit. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe he's just listening on uh, an SDR and he, he doesn't have transmit capability. Maybe he's not physically present. Maybe he and his buddies went out for a beer and he's not really there. Or he sees my call sign and says, I don't want to talk to that guy. Or the, his response may be delayed. So just for completeness, I reviewed my all.tx and looked for his call sign. I'd never decoded the station in the last few months since I last backed up my all.tx. Alt, alt so I called him twice and he responded and I worked him. So I've done this a couple of times just to see that it, it does work. So calling a station that I've seen listening on PSK Reporter, but I'm not decoded might yield me an atno and might yield me a band slot that I need. And for me, it's a new way to hunt DX. Sort of like fishing at the bottom, bottom fishing. You know, they haven't risen to the bait yet, but they're still out there. Okay, so using the same method, I called uh, ZS5KT six times. And uh, I just realized, okay, he's not, he falls in one of those categories where he's not gonna answer me. 
25 minutes later, he calls me. 25 minutes after I stopped calling him, he called me. So he obviously scrolled back up through his RX uh, pain, saw I was calling him and he called me and we worked. Interesting. So it could be an advantage in some situations when the band's just opening or when the band's about to close. Calling DX, you're calling DX that likely no one else has seen because they're all looking on the waterfall to people are transmitting. But the, these stations are sending decodes to the PSK reporter, but they're not transmitting anything at the moment. So the other part of this that's fun is DXing with friends. Uh, the W6CI Wolfback, an informal group of uh, uh, DX hunters that we get on uh, W6CI repeater. Usually every morning, Tony's the ringleader. And uh, we, we'll all watch a, a band and we'll, we'll chat about what's going on. And we'll be able to report on everyone's progress. And somebody will see somebody's RR73 that somebody else doesn't. And uh, it's an interactive human-to-human -human process, which, of course, is largely lacking from FT8. But uh, if you... Uh, if you play DX with friends, it's, it's a lot of fun. So let the DX magic happen for you. I mean, I've got band slots on Pakistan, Iranian Island, Nepal, Uzbekistan, Bangladesh, Maldives, and lots of others. That the DX is out there, it's, and it's a work in DX, and I'm, I'm currently playing the band slot game for my challenge block. I want my 2000 band slot medallion, so I'm working hard towards that. So the journeyman DXers box score. Here's the box score so far. And the, the most recent successes are uh, due to uh, FTA, my little peanut station here. Five band DXCC, the three work bands. If there was such a thing as eight band DXCC, I'd have it. And worked all CQ uh, zones mixed, but I got that before I started with FTA. I've got 319 confirmed, thanks to the, the good monk, and uh, 1931 challenge slots confirmed, and I'm heading for 2000. So, that's what I got to say about that. Questions, comments? A, a comment, Mike. Yeah. Yeah, I think your PSK reporter observations are, are right on, but I think there's one other cool part of it. By looking, by looking at uh, the map, uh, seeing who's decoding you, besides your, your very clever you know, targeting of those people, you also get a, 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 you know, a, a, a propagation map. You see where you're actually getting out and what your single strength is around the world. Yeah, I, you know, and I, I use that. Because, you know, they could have a, a monster station. So, you're, you know, they're receiving you much higher SNR or they have a low local noise. But at least you're you're seeing if you're, you know, you're getting out to that part of the world. Yeah, so absolutely. I, I really I, know, but I, I never thought of your trick. Um, <laughs> thank you for that. Well, I never thought of it either until somebody called me while I was, you know, holding my first cup of coffee and hadn't transmitted anything. I use I use the signal reports, which of course is the most valuable thing with PSK reporter. I use that to to uh, co correlate with uh, uh, K6TU's propagation forecasting, and uh, it usually makes sense because the propagation says the forecast says you should have propagation here. And sometimes it's better or worse depending on the sunspot number, but it's there. Hey Mike? Yes. Dave A6YQ. You, know, yes. you mentioned uh, looking at a really big all dot text file takes a long time to open in Notepad. There's a free application called Notepad++ that is much faster at opening large files. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. And uh, I actually have that. I just never thought to use it. Thank you, Dave. Uh, Mike, uh, Jeff, K1ZN. Yes, sir. 
The JTDX, are you familiar with that derivative program and uh, have you compared it to WSJTX? I, I have. Uh, JTDX is, a, is what's considered in the software world as a, as a hostile fork. Uh, <laughs> Joe, uh, Joe Taylor has made his uh, source code uh, readily available. And uh, what, they, what JTDX has done is taken it and, of course, put a, put a a, a good UI around it. Uh, I I tried it in parallel on a couple of, uh, for a couple of weeks, and I don't I don't know for sure, but my my instinct is that the decodes are deeper and better uh, with WSJCX. Now I'd have to disagree, Mike. Well, I'm running JTDX and I'm getting some awfully deep decodes. Well, so we're about a par. Yeah, we are, and just just my just my own personal opinion indeed the, the other problem with a hostile fork is that if joe decides to go uh, proprietary or put something in there that these guys don't understand they can they can go down a rabbit hole pretty quick so i i'm sort of a purist i'll stay, I'll stay with joe taylor's original product mike uh yeah. this, there's an uh this is neil and for FN in Georgia, uh, there's an excellent manual that uh, Gary Hinson, uh, ZL2 IFB uh, slash G4 IFB uh, has written. It's really uh, an outstanding uh, piece of work. And it, it's, it's very helpful uh, for the first time user. Uh, what, was know, this call, what was this call sign again? Zulu Lima 2, India Fox Bravo. Uh, it will be on that website or on his British website, which is Golf 4 India Fox Bravo. So, okay, uh, great. That's a great resource. Yeah, he's a, a really nice guy and uh, stuck up a nice friendship with Gary over the years. And thanks for your presentation. Yeah, I think it'll be a, it'll be an interesting addition if I ever have to give this again. Uh, Mike, this is Richard wb 6 ewm and I have a couple of other comments. Um, if you place your mouse over the frequency box and just roll the wheel, it will also change it, just like it does with the power slider. Yeah. And um, uh, I've also used PSK Reporter typing in the DXs. Um, call sign and seeing where uh, they are also being received. And that also helps. Oh yeah, that is a lot of powerful propagation observation tools at PSK Reporter. And if you're not, yes. if you're not already familiar with them, you should go check it out. It's pretty interesting. <laughs> oh, also, I have also found uh, using uh, hamspots.net that um, mm -hmm. If you type in the DX, uh, it will tell you what frequency they're actually transmitting on, and the different um, the different software um, that is reporting them, be it PSK Reporter or JTDX or WSJTX. Um, by putting your mouse over the the P in the ham spots uh, uh, um, top bar. Okay, good deal. Uh, Mike, uh, this is Ed K6DMZ. Mike, did I hear you correctly when you said that it's only about 1% of the time that you actually put your transmit on the receive frequency? Yeah, only about 1% of the time. And, and that's the situation where uh, the DX and I are exchanging strong signal reports, but one of us is getting QRM'd. So yep. I just... You know, I say, I say mentally to myself, I'm going to give this guy one or two more shots, and I just go on, I just go to TX on his TX frequency and give it a shot. Yeah, great, great, great talk. Thank you. Hey, Mike. Oh yeah. Yeah, Mike. This is Clark WU4B. I got a K3 question. Oh, okay. Um, and it, it's this, um, as you know, K3 tells you to set. I'm curious as to how you know. The is the power slider properly adjusted with the K3 if the ALC 
display is doing what it's supposed to do? Is that how you know it's working okay? Yeah. Uh, okay. The four solid bars and the fifth flickering. Right, right, okay. And, and what I found is it doesn't have to you know, flicker in time with the modulation, but it does have to flicker a little bit. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's that's really all. That's what I thought. The other another question is PSK reporters something that I've never really checked into, so I need to do that because it occurred to me from what you said. Uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to snag Pakistan, and I don't have them, and and, I, and I'm wondering if using PSK Reporter can at least help me determine if he's even decoding anything. And, well, and good, because I'm, I'm waiting, waiting. I'm looking for spots to occur before I realize he's on. Okay. And, and, yes. what, you're, and what, you, what are you suggesting that PSK Reporter may tell me that, he, that he's not transmitting, but he is there and he's, he, and he's yes. decoding and, the, and that I ought to try to call him. If, um, if, he, if he has his PC, connected to the internet and right. has enabled PSK reporting in his software, then right. he'll, he'll send his decode packets to PSK reporter just like everyone else. The, the other thing, if you're hunting Pakistan, uh, right. are you familiar with Club Log and their propagation? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. OK, so to give you a pretty good idea of what times and what, what bands uh, Right to, to look for them on. I just worked them on 17. Yeah, I guess I guess slot 1932 was confirmed. Uh, He's 17 meter. Hey, Mike. Yeah. Pekka stands on 17 meters right now. 18.100. Just worked them. Okay. Right. Bye. <laughs> bye, Clark. Bye. <laughs> there is some real time news you can use. The Wolfpack strikes again. It does. Hey, Mike, uh, um, a follow-up question. You know, I didn't introduce myself in the first question, but it's, it's David, KK6US. Um, I wasn't aware of what you and Tony were talking about, the alternate program. It, you said it looks like he just put his UI on top of uh, the WSJTX uh, code, which, do you know if that's true? Because it would make a lot of sense. I mean, the level of um, you know, DSP encoding and you know, comps that we used to actually write that is incredible. So, uh, do, do, does anyone think that that other alternate program went in and did any other DSP work or just UI? I do, work? I do, I do not think so. Uh, I do. I also do not know how current they are. Right. So, with with, with the with the author's version of the software, you've got a reasonable uh, chance of knowing what the what the uh, release configuration is. With a, with a hostile fork, you don't really know. Now, we all take it on good authority that the JTDX and the, uh, the LZ2, LZ2MV, all those guys are using the same core engine. Right? That, and and we, we generally believe that. Uh, my, my thought is, for me, for my own personal use, WSJTX does what I needed to do, and why? Why would I wander off the reservation? You know, I don't have motivation for that. 